can you explain to the lovely people here in London why that you ended up leaving TNA and how you explained it to them in your own way? I left because of money. <laughs> and the fact that I wasn't getting any. And I explained it to them in a very smart, wordy email. Which we have to hand. <laughs> and we also, before we start, have two Jaeger bombs. In honor of the best partier that's ever lived, Dixie Carter. <laughs> Here's to Dixie Carter. <laughs> Dixie. No. <laughs> So, right, so you are in TNA, Hogan and Bischoff come in, you're the highest rated segment on the show with Gail Kim. Like, it's very clear that you are one of the reasons that people are watching TNA. You're one of the top stars on the show, but you're not really being compensated to that regard. No, no. I was making like $40,000 a year. Is that right? Which, you know, some people are like, $40,000, that's a lot of and, money and what, So what, do, so, because if you work in WWE, right, they pay flights over like 300 miles, you do your own hotels, but, so what did TNA pay? Uh, they did pay for flights over 300 miles, yes, and they would pay for a room um, during the Bound for Glory pay-per-view, and maybe one or two, oh, if we went overseas, then that was taken care of. That was different. Overseas was different. But when we were in the States, which, you know, we only went overseas like once a year, we had to take care of um, our, our rooms and, you know, our rental cars and whatnot. You know, you're getting insured as a wrestler is a tremendous amount of money. And then upkeep of uh, the the one tool that you use in wrestling your body is, is a lot of money. So you have, you have a bunch of expenses. You, you, you're maintaining two households. You're maintaining the household, your residence that you live in, which you hardly ever even get to see. And then you're maintaining your household on the road. So could you imagine like maintaining two households on like, what is that? Like thirty thousand pounds a year? Yeah, thirty thousand pounds. It was, and then being a wrestler, knowing that you're not going to be able to do this into your sixties, or at least you shouldn't be doing this into your sixties. Therefore, you have to make a, um, allowances to put money away for the future. At least that that should be the plan if you're a wrestler. That that's the responsible thing to do. So, could you imagine? trying to put money away into, you know, your retirement and then maintaining two households on that kind of salary. And then when you're on TV, everybody thinks you got money, so everybody has their hand out. So if you have a family member who's in trouble, you know, that comes into play. You feel almost obligated because they're like, she's a big TV star, yet she'll let me, you know, starve to death. You know, but that's also a lot of pressure. At the same time, it's not like... TNA are saying, well, you know, we're they've brought in Hogan, they brought in Bischoff, they brought in Flair, oh, yeah. they brought in Hardy, they brought in R V D. Yeah, so and they're, they're spending, paying them money. They're spending all this money on them. Yes. Um, but not on you guys. So how yeah. do you navigate that? I mean, you know, my mom had passed away and I didn't even know how I was going to bury her. Like I, I'm I'm on this nationally televised TV show and I couldn't bury my mother. And I got on the phone with Dixie and that was like the first time ever in my life. I think I really got indignant towards an employer, you know, cause I would do anything for my mother. So I went like for the jugular and they, they, they came out the pocket to help me front the expenses to bury my mother. I had to pay it back, but like, it took a lot of guilt tripping for them to even do that. And I made a lot of sacrifices. I wasn't even there when she passed away. I was on a flight to go to a house show. And in fact, I flew right after the the funeral. I couldn't even stay for the, you know, the repast. I had a flight to go 
to a pay-per-view. I made a lot of sacrifices for TNA and it's, I wasn't the kind of person to gripe about them. I understood that being arrested, those are the kind of sacrifices you make. You miss Christmases, you miss birthdays, you miss funerals, you miss passings evidently. And, but I felt I had earned um, more money and I felt they had money to give. It'd be one thing where it was like, you know, the company isn't making that much. So we're all like, you know, chipping in together to like chug along. But no, nah, they had money. They just wasn't spending it on certain people. Dixie loved her toys and her toys were like her new signees that had been to WWE. If you had been, if you had stepped into a WWE ring, you got so much more respect than the homegrown talent that sacrificed their initial dream of going WWE to help start this company, you know? Because like I mentioned before, when you chose TNA, there was kind of like this unsaid thing that you're sacrificing your chance to go to WWE. And when, especially wrestlers my age, when you start off into wrestling, your first dream is to go to WWE. But now you're choosing to go to the other company, you know? So, yeah, I felt like I had something coming to me. And they, they, she, they wasn't giving it up. So I had to send an email. So, so they, they didn't feel that you were owed more. You felt you were. The email now comes into play. Okay. I don't know how you want me to read this because there was a lot of back and forth. Oh my God, because these people are misers. So, so they didn't, they, when you were, they asked you what you wanted. Yes, they asked me what I wanted. I told them I would think about it. And then they kept trying to like pressure me into a number. I said, well, no, hold on. I want to think about this. I'm a fair person. I want to think about this. So I sent them a number. And I remember I'm making like $42,000 a year. Okay. And so I sent them, Terry Terry's like, send us a number. We can't do this unless you send us a number. I was like, well, it's okay then. And I sent them a number and I sent a number of $104,000 in the email. You'll see it here. It says, greetings, Terry. And all it says is $104,000 plus 10%. And then I looked at the email. I was like, oops, my bad. I said, in the next one, I said, greetings, Terry. Please disregard the previous email. The four was in the wrong place. It should have read as follows, $140,000. Red Rooster. <laughs> so uh, he sends me an, an email and they're like, you know, how did you arrive at this number? They're like shocked. Like, oh my gosh, he wants like over three times the amount we're asking. And, and so they try to, um, how did you arrive? Because the way that with the 10%, it would have arrived. He says, how did you arrive to $154,000? Because with the plus 10%, there's like some back and forth with that. So my annual sal salary would have been $154,000. So that's their question. And I'm like, okay. Let me tell you how I arrived to that. Uh, and it's long, so you guys are going to have to, like, buckle up. Does everyone want to hear this email? <laughs> <sighs> Good afternoon, Terry. I, too, am happy with our open line of communication. <laughs> the plus 10% represents the annual increase. So it would be 140,000 per year plus a 10% annual increase. I did, I did not include the draw amounts because I thought we would negotiate all of that after an annual sum was agreed upon. I came up with this number after much consideration to the company's first response to my request, the growth of the company, inquiry to my peers and concern for the security of my future. As, as you know firsthand, being a wrestler means putting your body through considerable trauma, a task I am readily committed to. Traditionally, wrestlers work vigorously toward the goal of making it to an American nationalized television show, where the many bumps they have taken along the way are paid off. Yes, TNA may have paid me 42,000 plus last year. However, 
about half of that was spent on expenditures directly related to wrestling, which, as my research uncovers, left me with a salary less than that of a manager at McDonald's. I initially agreed to sign with TNA on the lower side of the pay scale due to the fact that my fame lie in another country. I had to put that in because um, they try to say like, you know, before we met you, you weren't making anything and that's not true. I made a lot of money in Japan, so I had to like give them the WhatsApp, you know? Um, uh, another my fame lie in another country and my character image was unconventional in a sex sales conscious industry. This was a strategy on my part so that I may feature a, no, there's a strategy on my part. Hold on, I'm not, my eyes aren't what they used to be. This was a strategy on my part so that I may gain the opportunity to demonstrate what a positive feature I trusted I could be within the company. I believe that I have accomplished that goal. My next goal is to attain earnings greater than what I received in Japan, which ironically was much, much closer to the counter amount than my current income. The retirement age of a professional athlete is half that of the 65 years that most Americans retire, usually due to injury and other complications associated with the sport. Customarily, pro athletes have a higher earning power over a shorter career because of the health hazards related to the job. Numerous industry executives and administrators, many in our own company, have stated and agree that TNA talent is abhorrently underpaid. TNA management has made several declarations that TNA has grown appreciately this last year. Through tremendous teamwork, TNA has been able to acquire such assets as a new state-of-the-art editing and sound studio, additional countries added to the list of broadcasts worldwide, the legendary talent Mick Foley and New Legends title, just to name a few. Observing the substantial growth of TNA made me realize that it's time for a significant increase in talent income. In conclusion, <laughs> the aforementioned factors influence my counter. And their response? Oh, let's see. Let's read here. What did they say? Uh, thank you for the email. You make several compelling points as to why your compensation should be increased. We don't argue the points. We have trouble reconciling the numbers. Last Hulk Hogan question. Just be as honest as you possibly can. Did you see the sex? I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and what did you, what did you think you about it? You can't say Hulk Hogan nowadays without going, did you see it? Uh, <laughs> we want to see what your finisher is in the bed. Hello. What's up? <laughs>